Ahead on early birds, the bolts are in town, but it's the Falcons hoping lightning strikes for their fourth straight home win. Plus, we sit down one-on-one -on -one with Atlanta's standout receiver, Jake Matthews, shows off his fancy footwork. If you ever feel Crossed, you're probably in bad shape. And college football in the South is in great shape with a huge showdown in Athens. We'll break it all down, plus lots more on Early Birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. He's DJ. I'm Justin. The first place Falcons. We in first place. First place we Falcons. First place. How about we're saying that? Looking to stay atop the <laughs> NFC South. That's going to be important. Let's get things started with the opening drive and shock Falcons and Chargers tomorrow here on. Before we get to that game, let's talk about the trade deadline earlier this week. Falcons were busy. They added a cornerback. We'll get to the secondary, but the big news, trading former first round pick Calvin Ridley to Jacksonville shock. Yeah, something just inside of me. I'm sure a lot of Falcon fans just felt like his was mm -hmm. over in the new regime. We've seen so many guys come and go. You just felt like it Calvin really in return, and you probably would not see him in a Falcons uniform again. And this is exactly what happened. Yeah, he's a great player, did a lot for his team and his organization. But after everything that went down, I think they just wanted to move on and start clean. Got a pair of draft picks from the Jaguars. Which picks depends how on how Ridley does in Jacksonville. Arthur Smith didn't say much about the deal. Doesn't sound like it was a spur of the moment decision. There's a million different ways these negotiations happen. Um, that I could explaining that wasn't some short term that happened at the trade deadline, but those were long, um, a long process. And leave it at that. All right, we'll leave it at that. As we continue on the opening drive, let's talk about the game this week. The LA Chargers, they've got a great passing attack led by Justin Herbert, fourth in the league in passing yards per game. Falcons just let PJ Walker throw for over 300. They got some injuries in the secondary still. So, DJ, what kind of concerns do you have? can do well he's a lot better passer he's more of an accurate passer as well so last week pj walker missed a bunch of throws mm. especially early in the ball game those are to miss in this type of game i expect him to come out and throw it accurately he's completing 65 percent of his passes only only throw four interceptions he's pretty good throwing the rock so i expect those type of days where we got to be on our p's and q's and hopefully you get to him doesn't play corner or safety but he's ready to face the challenge that the Chargers offer. This team, you know, they pass the ball a ton, so they're going to try to spread us out. And we're anticipating that. We're anticipating the same team, kind of what Cincinnati did to us. So, um, just you know, we got to be physical. We try to be physical. in the box game. But when they start spreading us out, you know, we got to just make sure that we stay at our physicality. As we wrap up the opening drive, we already said it once. Falcons fans, hopefully, you're saying it one more time Atlanta yes the Falcons atop the NFC South first time by themselves in that position since early 2017 and a stretch of some winnable games ahead Chargers but shot can Atlanta stay there for a while oh absolutely I mean just look at where all year long they've been in every game they've had a chance to win all these games and it's been chance to win every game this is a team that's highly competitive you think about coming up the Bears the Commanders you got a really good chance to run out and get a good stretch of games especially against the Panthers too of games and get really over 500 and make a run toward the playoffs at home this year we'll see oh, if they can continue good call, that good call. tomorrow against the Bolts welcome on in two early birds exactly I'm Justin Felder and the Falcons defense they've got some reasons to be concerned Herbert, but Austin Eckler, real good running back. And we go back to the passing game, they throw him the ball. Oh, uh, this guy has 53 catches on mm. the season, which leads the team. Yeah. He's the leading rush. Got to make sure we account for him and everything they do. I'm already smiling, thinking about our next one. Shock! <laughs> I know the film room is burning up the quarter mile. <laughs> Green. I like Chargers. This. Yeah, I like Bolts. that. I like that. I see, how, I see the correlation. I'm on a roll. I'm on fire. All right, go warm up as <laughs> illustrator. We'll see you right. in a few. But first, Drake London gets to face a team from his hometown this weekend. Kind of. The Los Angeles Chargers moved from San Diego to in high school. And he told me among his buddies back home, the Chargers are kind of like the Clippers to the Lakers playing second fiddle. So when he and I sat down one on one this week, I asked Drake who he cheered for growing up. It turns out his childhood team was inspired by a former Georgia Tech and High Five Sports phenom. 
I was a fan of the Lions growing up um, because of Megatron. Mm -hmm. It's simply just because of him. He was somebody, somebody that I idolized um, and just loved watching him attack the ball every play. Have you had a chance to meet him in Atlanta? Uh, no. Uh, coach Kerry Colbert um, back at SC, we would go on Zooms with him a couple times oh, nice. um, during COVID year. He would just give us game and tips. Let's talk about you a little bit. Nearly halfway through your rookie season, what kind of midterm grade do you give yourself right now? A midterm grade? Me personally, I'm hard on myself, so I know I, I still have a lot that's left out there on the table. So I'll probably give myself a, a B minus. A B, maybe. What what would take you from you know a B minus or a B to an A for the second half? Just making my plays, mm -hmm. uh, making my plays and contributing on all levels of the field, whether it's blocking, catching the ball down the field, or, or getting some yak. I'm glad you mentioned blocking. How fast was your quarterback going on that run there? You were right alongside him. Man, I was yelling at Marcus, get behind me. You know, you get a little extra, but. Um, that man's been fast since I could ever remember in college, so I got to feel it on the on the field for <laughs> for real speed. He got the yardage, and that's all that matters. Kind of goes hand in hand with the blocking. One thing that I've noticed with you is if you have a chance to hit somebody after a catch, you're going to. I mean, how do you describe your physicality? Um, just bring it every play, you know. Coach Arthur Smith, he jokes about it all the time, whether or not I'm a soft Cali guy <laughs> or I'm this guy from LA to this that. But um, I just try to prove it every down, every day on the practice field. Um, that I'm an able blocker and I, and I can't help this team. It's not in your job description, but the team made a big trade, traded away a former first round pick at wide receiver. I know that's not your business, but when you see that, does it give you a boost of confidence to know that, hey, they're comfortable moving forward with you as the guy at wide receiver for the foreseeable future? Um, I, w I wouldn't say comfortable. Um, I would never say comfortable because you can't be comfortable in this job at all, you know? Again, that wasn't any of my business, so mm -hmm. I didn't really pay it no mind. I'm here, so I'm gonna be in the present and just try to give them my best. I have to ask you a little basketball. Yeah. Hawks are back. Have you made it to a game? Have you heard from Onyeka? Have you heard yeah. from Trey at all? Uh, that's funny that you just uh, said that. Uh, I was talking to O probably two days ago mm -hmm. and just told him like, hey, I know you guys' season started. Like, I want to come out to a game. He came out to the Saints game. Mm -hmm. So uh, we may do a jersey swap or something like that, which would be pretty, pretty cool. So They might need a, a wing off the bench. You give them a few minutes if they need you? Uh, <laughs> hey, if they give me a 10-day contract, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. Let's talk about the defense. Now, we've talked a lot about the offense, but let's talk about how this defense can be very multiple in the things that they show. And this week, they got to have to do that because Justin Herbert is a guy who can really cook if you allow him to see exactly what's going on. Let's start up front with the defense. This is TQ Graham. He is usually a guy that's inside in like a two or three or one technique at times. He's outside. You got Michael Walker on the edge who looks like he's going to blitz, but he's actually going to be covering the tight end right here off the edge. So what happens here is, this is a great job by Richie Grant. This is, I'm gonna show you the rock combination here. You got a seam running up the middle, and then you're gonna have a end cut on the outside. They gotta pay attention to Richie Grant right off the edge because I think he confuses the quarterback because he disguises it so well. The quarterback thinks he has a throw in here, but he really doesn't. As watch this play get started, this is a nice job here. You see, you got the coverage on the outside, but let's go back just for a half a second here. But here's Richie Grant. He looks like he's inside and he's gonna be covering this guy. To the quarterback, his eye says, okay, he has him. Now I could throw this in cut with no problem. But at the end of this play, why does Richard Grant come off this guy and end up on the inside and causes a incompletion here? Quarterback's already throwing the football. He's peeled off. And now this is a very sketchy throw for Richard Grant on the inside and this quarterback. And he does a good job of coming off of it and being clear and causing the incompletion. These are the type of plays you need from this Falcons defense. Delusion doing a lot of great things to disguise. If you can do that, you got a great chance of getting to Justin Herbert, confusing him, but more than anything, maybe getting an interception there, Justin. Yes, yeah, secondary will be in the spotlight tomorrow. Shock, we've got more to come on early birds. And speaking of the spotlight, it is shining bright on Athens today in the college football world. Basically a play-in game for the SEC championship. Michael Jenkins is here to break it all down. Plus, what makes it so hard is you're practically backpedaling as they're sprinting into you full speed. I'm falling over just thinking about it. Jake Matthews says it takes fancy footwork to fit in on the Falcons O-line. He'll explain next in Going Deep. Hey Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. 
Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery, today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. All right, welcome back into Early Birds, and we welcome in former Falcons wide receiver Michael Jenkins. Talking college football, no question what the yeah. game of the day is. Yeah. Georgia and Tennessee in Athens. How you feeling? You ready for this one? I don't one? think we need to talk about anything else. That's the game, <laughs> game of the day. I tell you what, we're going to dive deep yeah. into this one, and that's because it is our Zaxby's indescribably good game of the week, Georgia and Tennessee. 330 in Athens, top two teams in the AP poll. You see the numbers there, though. Tennessee actually number one in the playoff rankings. Mm -hmm. So, Jake, let's start with the Georgia side of things. What is the dog's biggest strength in this game? What it should be given DJ and the rest of the dogs fans a lot of confidence. Obviously their defense only mm. giving up 10 points a game and that's something that they're going to really need to hold true against this Tennessee offense. So starting off with with the defense I know they're missing Nolan Smith a big mm -hmm. piece of that defense but being able to slow down hitting hooker in that offense um, putting up 50 points a game. You made a great point with Nolan Smith there a, a leader on that defense a lot of other guys will need to step up here's what Kirby Smart had to say. We got an outside linebacker room we feel comfortable with. Those guys play outside linebacker. Those MJ Sherman and uh, Marvin, uh, all those guys do a good job. They'll get a chance. They'll get reps there. I mean, again, that's the next man up. I mean, those guys have to play. They, they practice every day just like Nolan does. They have to have an opportunity to go play. I mean, it's, it's the next man up. Whether the twos practice every day, our threes practice every day, our scouts practice every day, and those are the guys that will have to go play. All right, so that's the Georgia side of things. Let's talk about the Tennessee side of things. Last year, they lost in the Music City Bowl. Two yeah. years ago, they had three wins. So when you've watched this as a college football fan, how have they turned things around and so fast? Josh Heifel's done a great job yeah. with this team. I mean, obviously, you have a guy like Hendon Hooker, yeah. who's 29 touchdown passes, one pick so mm -hmm. far in the season. Like we said earlier, averaging 50 points a game. So for them to go to Athens, they're going to have to start fast and try to get a, a lead early to try and win this game. You saw the bracket there a moment ago, number one in the playoffs. Rankings. What is that makes this offense tick though? Is it as simple as the quarterback? I mean, it's the quarterback, it's the dynamic players they have around them, and it's the speed of play that they go in. I mean, we talked about me being at the Alabama game, and the, the front line of Bama just couldn't do anything because they're mm. so tired with the speed that Tennessee plays at. Interesting. Here's what the ball's been saying this week uh, You can win a game with confidence because you paid the price, you've worked, you prepared uh, to go out and play the right way. So, yeah, uh, both teams, I'm sure, are confident and should be. Um, you know, for us, this week preparation is going to be key. You know, we talked about, you know, a team uh, of hope, a team of belief. You know, we were on that spectrum uh, a year ago because of our work habits, you know, not just during training camp or during the season, but, you know, the work habits since we got back last January. Uh, there's an expectation within our locker room. All right, so Georgia and Tennessee today. Last matchup to talk about. Sorry to do an all SEC day. Sorry, your Big Ten. Uh, Alabama and LSU, it's a big one. LSU kind of quietly going about their business, 10th in the playoff rankings. Could they make their own push and challenge the Crimson Tide in the SEC West? They definitely could. And we've seen Bama this year struggle on the road at Texas, at Arkansas, obviously losing at Tennessee. Now they go down to LSU, where LSU beat a yeah. very good Ole Miss team that was ranked top 10. So they're playing at a high clip. We could be seeing playing games for both sides of the SEC yeah. championship today. Jake, we appreciate it. Shock, you better get on the road soon. Traffic in Athens, not going to be pretty today. I know, I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. That's why I got to get out of here, man. I right, appreciate you guys. To be an NFL offensive lineman, you have to be strong, you have to be big, but success often comes down to your feet. Jake Matthews is one of the best at it, and he says being a good old lineman starts from the ground up. Here's Jake to explain, and this week's going deep. As an offensive lineman, um, I guess I'm going to make it as simple as possible. You're either run blocking or pass blocking. And when you're pass blocking, I guess what makes it so hard is you're practically backpedaling as they're sprinting into you full speed. And the goal is, you know, don't let them get around you or through you to the quarterback. And, and you got to basically backpedal, keep your balance, and react to whatever they're doing. So the easiest way I could explain it, I guess, is Keep a good base. If you're ever feet are together or crossed, you're probably in bad shape. These guys are really good. They'll make you look like a fool really quick. So that, that's just the footwork part of it. And then you gotta use your hands. If you don't use your hands, the guy's just gonna run around you. So there's a lot that goes into it. It might look weird and a lot of people don't get it, but it's, uh, it's extremely hard. <laughs> 
Oh, very cool from Jake. Speaking of O lineman, former Georgia Bulldog making his presence felt in LA. You'll hear about him next on Early Birds. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Oh, well, it's always important to stretch those hammies before playing in an NFL game or if you're like DJ and I just before doing any housework, anything like that. Can't be too careful. Unfortunately, hamstring injuries all too common in the NFL. But what exactly happens when that muscle is strained? Dr. Kyle Hammond explains in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. The hamstring muscles are the four muscles on the back of the thigh to start up near your butt and go down to your knee. Very important muscles with sprinting, very important muscles with you know strength, things that you'll do propelling your body forward. And so as muscle strains occur, again, similar to MCL injuries, they are injured on a grade one, two, and three scale based off of how much muscle disruption there is. The other unique thing about hamstring injuries is if they occur closer to the butt or the middle part of the thigh or towards the knee, they can also have a differing timeline as far as how the body will heal and how long it takes to get better. I also mentioned that there's four hamstring muscles, so sometimes it's more than one hamstring muscle that's involved, and if that's the case, that also can change the timeline um, returning to play from a hamstring injury. And they can take anywhere from a week to up to six weeks to get better, heal themselves, and have the athlete safely return to play. Other things that we do with hamstring injuries is uh, we also utilize biologic injections for hamstring injuries. So we use platelet-rich plasma or PRP, and we use stem cell injections, and these types of biologic injections have been shown um, in some is to try to help speed up a little bit of the healing process uh, and allow that athlete to get back out on the field uh, safely and sooner. All right, thanks, Doc. Well, he'll always be a dog, but now he's proven to be a pretty good charger. Uh, Jamari Sari is earning the respect of his teammates. That's next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. All right, time for our play of the day presented by Lucra, the new friendly competition app. Here's the question, Shock. Mm. Who's going to have more points this weekend? Georgia. Ooh, that's a good one. Or the Falcons. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm going to go with Georgia because it's okay. going to be a high shootout, I think, with them in Tennessee. I what don't do you know. Think? Those college games you think will be a shootout, they always tend to be low score and sneak up on Ooh. you. But the Falcons can score. Justin Herbert can throw it on. Could go either way. If you want to compete head to head with your friends, just scan the QR code on your screen. Well, we get to see one of our former high five favorites on the opposing sideline tomorrow. I remember me and you were at the NFL Combine. We were watching the O-lineman bench press, oh, yeah. and they were all saying, oh, yeah. I don't want to do it right now. Who was the one of the few exceptions to bench? Jamari. Jamari Salyer. Yeah, the big man out of UGA and Pace Academy. He's been a real story for the Chargers this year. Shock somehow didn't get picked into the sixth round. I don't, I don't Crazy. That. I don't know how that happened either. Made his first start last month. Didn't give up a single pressure. And check this video out from, from back his first start teammates his head coach they they recognized his effort my first start right at left tackle Before I give it to him, this is his game ball, but we know that it took a team for him to earn it. All right, Jamari Sawyer. Yeah, yeah awesome. rookie sixth round pick, Jamari Sawyer. All right, Falcons and Chargers tomorrow. One more matchup to watch. A guy who he probably has seen, Khalil Mack. Ooh, okay. We have to make sure we know where he's at at all times because guess what? He can ruin everything for us if we don't get him blocked up. Yeah. No way he's at. A lot of old linemen talk in this show, and for very good reason. That'll for be sure. something to watch on both sides of the ball. Well, that's it for us on Early Birds. For our quarterback, DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Thanks for joining us. Have a good morning and a great weekend.